Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be making a very unique salami called the mint salami. Now, before we get started, you got to know this is not a dessert salami. This is a savory salami that sort of plays on the ideas of the peppermint candy. This is a really cool salami, partially because it's the only one of its kind on the planet, but it's great because the mind is going to perceive this salami to have a certain flavor, but once it's eaten, the flavor is completely unexpected, which will have everyone who is partaking in this delicious charcuterie talking for days to come. Let me show you how we made it. The first thing we're going to do is prepare a mold solution. And this is an optional step, but if you're going to be making salami, you got to know that mold is going to grow on it while it's drying. And not all molds are good. So by adding a beneficial mold, this is Penicillium nalgiavensi, we're going to reduce the risk of having unwanted molds grow on our salami. So we're just going to prepare that in some distilled water a couple hours before we need it. As far as the meats go, I used beef and pork for this recipe. Lamb would actually be a very interesting option. You know, just substitute the beef for the lamb. And I'm just cutting some ribeye here into small chunks and setting it to the side. We're also going to be using lean pork. So this particular cut comes from the hind leg of the pig. And then once we're finished processing the pork, we're going to add our back fat. Uh, we're using about 30% fat. And I'm just going to cut that into small chunks as well. And all of our meat and fat needs to be chilled before grinding. So as soon as we're done with our fat, our pork, and our beef, we're going to place that into a freezer for about 30 minutes so that it can chill and partially freeze, which is perfect because this gives us an opportunity to prepare our starter culture. Salami is a fermented sausage, which means we have to ferment the meat in order to create a safe environment for it to dry. Otherwise, unwanted nasties will start to grow all in it. So we're going to add a starter culture called Flavor of Italy, which contains beneficial bacteria that consume the sugars in your salami, releasing lactic acid, lowering the pH. So we just mixed a little starter culture in some distilled water, and we're going to let it rehydrate for 30 minutes. While that's rehydrating and our meat is in the freezer chilling, we're going to prepare our casings. Now we're just using synthetic protein line casings from the sausage maker, and we're going to place that in some lukewarm water. This only needs to rehydrate for about 15 or 20 minutes. So while that's happening, let me take you through the spices. First, we're going to use pink curing salt. Number two, this is going to protect our meat from unwanted bacteria. We're also going to use kosher salt, arguably the most important ingredient in this entire recipe. Next, we're going to add some non-fat dry milk powder. We're going to come back with dextrose, which is the food for our bacteria. That's necessary to feed the bacteria. Here we've got a little white pepper. you got to have pepper in the pepper mint salami. <laughs> now we've got some granulated garlic. You could use fresh garlic in this recipe. And then we're going to add our mint, which is going to be our staple spice in this one. And I love this particular brand of mint. I think it really comes through in this recipe. And we've actually started using this in some of our Lebanese and Mediterranean recipes and just absolutely love it. So we're using this brand. If you have a favorite brand of mint, use that. And then finally, the last ingredient, you know, the plot twist, the ingredient that's going to shake everything up. We're going to be adding food grade titanium dioxide. So first and foremost, this is obviously optional. You don't need it. But in this concept salami, we want our salami to kind of represent peppermint bark or a peppermint candy. And by adding a little titanium dioxide and diluting it with water, it's going to give our salami sort of uh, the appearance of being somewhat sweet rather than savory. And that's what we're going for. So we're going to put that to the side. Our meat has now been chilled. You know, we've got our pork, beef, and our fat. And now let's go ahead and grind it. Now that our meat has been ground and we just used a coarse plate on our new number 12 grinder from the sausage maker, that's a fun grinder. You'll see that in more recipes coming up. But we're going to go ahead and add our starter culture to our meat inside of our KitchenAid stand mixer. And while that's being mixed, we're going to come back with our seasonings. We're going to mix our meat until it becomes very sticky and tacky. You know, if you grab a little bit, it'll stick to your hands. And once we get to that texture, we're going to add our titanium dioxide. This is going to be added within the last 
20, 30 seconds of mixing. All we wanna do is incorporate that last ingredient and then just make sure that it's mixed throughout the meat. You're gonna notice that uh, if you add this ingredient, pretty much everything is gonna take on a slight pinkish color. Your texture is not gonna change. It's still gonna be relatively sticky. It's now just gonna be a lot lighter than you're used to seeing. So we're gonna take that and stuff it into our synthetic casings. If you wanna use natural casings like beef bung or hog middles, or really it doesn't matter the type of casing that you use for this salami. I like this particular size and you wanna stuff it as tightly as possible, which is one great reason for using synthetic casings is because they tend to be a lot stronger than natural casings. So we're just gonna make sure that we stuff that as tightly as we can, really packing it in there, trying to make sure that we you know, don't get a lot of air pockets. And then to finish it up, I'm just gonna use this handy tool to clean out our stuffing horn and then just shove that right into the salami. There's gonna be a little mince left in your hopper. We're gonna wrap that in cellophane, that's what this is here. And we're going to allow that to ferment. So that's what we're going to use to test the pH so we don't, you know, mess with our salami. At this point, we're going to prick our salami. If you have any air pockets, this is the time to prick those out. And then remember that mold solution we prepared at the beginning of this video? I'm going to brush it on. I like this particular method of applying the mold. I tend to use a lot less product and the mold goes a lot further. But you could use a squirt bottle or, you know, do a dip or however you want. So once we get our mold on there and we prick our salami, let's go ahead and weigh it. And we're going to record our actual weight and our target weight. So for this salami, we're targeting a 40% weight loss. So I'm shooting for 641 grams as a finished weight. That's 40%. If you like a slightly softer salami, you could pull it at 35%. Totally up to you. And now it's time to ferment. And I've been trying to come up with some relatively easy ways to ferment your salami, and I think you're going to like this one. We're going to take our salami stick and set it on some saran wrap, some cling film. Next, we're going to completely wrap our salami in that cling film. Just make sure that you get the sides, the tops, the bottoms. Just close the entire salami in. And what you're doing here is you're trapping in the moisture. Salami fermentation requires high humidity. And by wrapping your salami in cling film, we're satisfying that requirement for proper fermentation. The next and only other requirement for proper fermentation is temperature. This particular starter culture likes to be fermented between 70 and 90 degrees. And my kitchen happens to be about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to take that little packet of mints and our salami that's been wrapped in cling film and literally just leave it right there on our kitchen counter. And that's it. That's how we're going to ferment the salami. So we're going to let it sit on our kitchen counter for anywhere between 18 to 24 hours. The target temperature is 70 to 90 Fahrenheit or 21 to 32 Celsius. And it doesn't matter where you place your salami as long as you can be within that temperature range. As far as humidity goes, you want high humidity for proper fermentation, over 80%. But because we wrapped our salami in cling film, that is absolutely going to be no problem. And we're going to know our salami is properly fermented when we reach a target pH of anything between 4.9 and 5.2. That's gonna put us in the safe zone and it's gonna give us the perfect acidity for this particular recipe. So it's been about 20 hours and we're now gonna test the pH. And I'm gonna show you a couple things uh, that you could look for. Now you can apply this to basically any salami recipe that you're making. So we're gonna take our sample out and the first thing that you should notice is the texture. During the process of fermentation, coagulation of proteins happen. And your salami sample should seem more bound together. If it's very soft and if it still feels like raw mincemeat, it's not quite done yet. So you can see right here, it looks like it's bound together more like a sausage than ground meat. And that's one key indicator that proper fermentation has occurred. Another way to tell is to use your pH meter. We're using a pH meter by a pair of instruments. Great pH meter, not only for salami making, but for cheese making, wine making, hydroponics, all kinds of stuff. All right, so remember, we're looking for anything below 5.2 and above 4.9 with this particular starter culture. And it looks like I'm at 5.09, well within the safe zone. It's time to go ahead and pull this salami. It's done fermenting, and we're gonna place it into our drying chamber. So I've been getting a lot of emails regarding how to maintain a pH meter, and I know a lot of you have went ahead and purchased the Apera Instruments pH meter. And so I'm working on finishing a couple videos on how to maintain, how to clean, how to store, how to calibrate your pH meter so that you can get the longest life out of it. So you wanna stick around for that. We're now just gonna unwrap our salami. And as I unwrap it, I can see there's a lot of moisture that's been built up into that cling film, which is exactly what we're looking for. All that moisture was trapped, which gave us that really nice high humidity. That means our salami didn't dry prematurely during fermentation. So we're gonna take that and place it into our dedicated drying chamber, which is really nothing more than a modified refrigerator. And if you wanna know how to build a salami drying chamber, be sure to stick around to the end of this video. I'm gonna post a link in the video suggestions showing you how I built mine, and it's actually pretty easy.
The drying conditions inside your chamber are going to be 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 Celsius, and the humidity is going to average about 80%. And your salami is going to stay in there until it loses the appropriate amount of weight. And in my case, that's about 40%. It's been a little less than two months. Our salami's lost 40% of the weight, and depending on the casing that you use and the diameter of it will determine how long it takes. But for me, roughly 61 millimeters is gonna take anywhere between seven to eight weeks. So here we go. We've got the white mold that's covered the outside, really protecting the salami from any bad mold. And let's go ahead and slice it open and see what it looks like inside. What a cool looking salami. This is guaranteed to stand out on a charcuterie platter. Reminds me of the black salami that we did not too long ago. And I gotta tell you, I'm loving the mosaic effect. The contrast between the beef and the pork and the fat looks absolutely brilliant. The texture of the salami feels great. It looks like everything was bound together properly. And I gotta be honest, my brain is having a hard time processing what this might taste like. So let's give it a taste. Mm. Wow. That is such a cool experience. The brain thinks sweet, but it's savory. You've got garlic and the mint really brightens it up. It comes through in a, a very fresh way. It's also got a great mouthfeel. The fat just melts in your mouth, perfect acidity, really tasty, really unique salami. I'll definitely be making this one again. So let me show you how we're gonna store this. I wanna vacuum seal it because I don't wanna lose any more moisture. I don't want the salami to dry out, but I also want to continually take slices off of it. So we're gonna put it in this vac seal pouch with a handheld vac sealer. And this is gonna allow me to vacuum seal it, but then whenever I want, I can open the pouch up, take slices off and then re-vacuum seal it without wasting a lot of bags. It's a great affordable option. So that's how we made the mint salami. Thanks for watching. If you had any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you're new to our channel, we wanna say welcome, thanks for being here. If this is the first video you've seen from our channel, check out some of our playlists. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We post new videos each week. We'll see you in the next one.